Join thousands of others who have made the washi tape journal. Take an old file folder, some copier paper and some washi tape and transform it into a useful notebook or journal in just 10 minutes. What supplies are we going to need to create this book? Well, lucky for us, we don't need a lot. First of all, you'll need 10 sheets of copier paper. This is just regular photocopier paper, nice and cheap, fairly thin. We'd have 10 sheets, eight and a half by 11 or A4 if you are in Europe. So 10 sheets. You're gonna need an old file folder. So um, you can use a kind of beige color like this, craft color, or you can use a colored one if you would like. Either works just fine. Um, you can use a regular uh, letter size one, or if you can get hold of one, a legal size, a larger one is really helpful. The way this is helpful is it just makes the pockets at the center a little bit bigger if you have a legal size one. But if you have a letter size one, that's perfectly fine. The pockets will just be a little bit smaller. You will also need some thread. So if you do not have wax linen thread, which is what we generally use in book binding, you can use instead a number five pearl cotton or some embroidery floss. If you happen to have some beeswax handy to put a little coat of beeswax on these two threads, that would be great. But if you don't, it is not necessary. You may also want to have um, some double stick tape like this. Again, not necessary, but nice to have to create the pockets. In terms of tools, you will need a ruler, a pencil, a pair of scissors, a craft knife. I will be using a bone folder, which is what we use in book binding. If you do not have a bone folder, you can use an old gift card, credit card, or one of these cards from a hotel. So a room card key. So that is an alternative to a bone folder. A book binding awl is useful, but if you don't have an awl, just take an, a, a tapestry or a darning needle and put it inside an old cork. So unfortunately, you may have to crack open a bottle of wine to get yourself a cork and pop um, a needle in. Um, you can always secure it with a tiny dab of glue if you want to, either white glue or hot glue gun. You will also see me using a punching cradle, which is another bookbinding tool. But if you do not have a punching cradle, and most people don't, a big old catalogue is helpful. One of these sort of big things that you sometimes get in the mail and we generally recycle. Or a styrofoam tray from Produce or some kids fun foam. This is just some kids fun foam stacked up together, the self-adhesive kind. You'll also need a needle if you do not have a bookbinding needle, which I'm sure you don't, and that's perfectly fine. Um, an embroidery needle would be a good alternative. Just make sure whichever thread you plan to use, you can fit um, it through the eye of the needle that you choose. You will also need two clips. You can use two clothespins, two quilting clips, or two binder clips. That is all the tools and supplies we need. Let's get started. We're gonna start out by creating our pages for our notebook. So remember, you've got 10 sheets of photocopier paper. What we're going to do is cut them in half. So if you have a paper cutter, you could cut them in half with a paper cutter. You could measure with a ruler and use a craft knife. But what I'm gonna do, and I think it's the easiest way, is to fold them in half, just line up the edges really carefully. Rub with your finger, get your bone folder or your key card, smooth that fold, open it up, and just gently tear it. And try and get a smooth tear. And what I do is I alternate, so I put a torn edge here at the top and then a torn edge at the bottom, and then I just stack up my pages. So now I have 20 pages. I put them into two stacks of 10. Hang them on the table so that they're lined up on the bottom and on the side. And then I'm gonna fold them over into one unit. So I've got 10 sheets here. I'm gonna gently press in the middle and gently fold them in half. Press in the center and push side to side. So you can use your bone folder here, or if you don't have a bone folder, you can use your key card. This here is a signature or a section. Once these pages are folded over, we create what we call in bookbinding, a signature or section. So now we have our two signatures. If you have a heavy book lying around, like a dictionary, you can just pop those underneath to kind of press them while we create our cover. Now let's start working on the cover. So whichever file folder you have, if you've got a regular letter size one or a legal size one, I want you to just rub along this crease with your bone folder or your key card and gently tear it in half. 
It can be pretty tough. We're going to create two covers, one here and one here. I'm actually going to do it with this larger one. Just press along this fold. You could um, use a paper cutter if you wanted to or a knife, but you don't need to because we're going to neaten up this edge. I'm going to go in with my knife and a ruler. Just trim up this edge right here, this torn edge. Now I'm going to make my cover. So this is going to be the height of my cover. By height, I mean, here's our book, here's the height. I'm going to make the height a tiny bit bigger than our signatures. So our signatures are now currently, let's measure, let's measure, five and a half inches tall. We're going to make our cover five and three quarter inches tall. So let's go in with that pencil and mark. We're going to mark in three places, five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. Five and three quarters. And I'm going to join all three dots together. And I'm going to slice with a knife. Again, use a paper cutter if you have one. Here's one of my covers. Now that's super long, but that's exactly what we want. And let's do the same with the other half of the file folder. I'm going to get rid of this folded part, scored part. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of this scored part first. Make sure you've got a nice sharp blade on your craft knife. Use an X-Acto, put a new blade in, or if you're using one of these ones where you snap off the blades. Let's turn that around and make another cover that is five and three quarter inches high. I'll also show you how to do it on this um, smaller file folder as well. So why are we doing it at five and three quarters? It's to give ourselves a little bit of protection for our signatures. As you can see here, we've got a little bit extra here and a little bit extra here, and it just protects them on the outside from being damaged. So that is why we make our covers a tiny bit bigger than our signatures. So here's my two covers made out of the legal size folder. We'll cover this up, or not, if you don't want to. You can save these scraps if you want to use them for another project, or um, maybe make a closure on some of these. And let me show you how I would do it with this um, letter size file folder. Trim up this scored part again. From that edge that I just cut, measure five and three quarters again. So what can you do with these file folders? Well, anything you like. You can collage on them. You can paint on them. You can jelly print. Zentangle on them. So here's one of our green covers. You just notice that it's just shorter because this is a letter size file folder and this is a legal sized file folder. I'll say that five times quickly. Let's trim up this torn edge here. If you don't want to mark with a pencil, you can always just mark with the tip of your knife. So five and three quarters like that. And if you're working metric, it will be about 14 and a half centimeters or just a tiny bit bigger than your signature. So here are two covers from the smaller file folder. Here are two covers from the larger file folder. So whichever you have on hand is what you should use. So now we get to decorate our covers. So you could just leave this green, you could leave it plain, you could also leave this plain. Um, in this one here, I added some vintage papers. I collaged them on with matte medium. This one here, I started to do some Zentangle on the cover. This one here, I left plain. You can still see that piece there. This one I left completely plain. So maybe you could give this to someone um, to decorate themselves. And then this one here, I used washi tape. And this is what I'm going to use um, in this book today. But you decorate your covers however you would like. This is your book. I may have a bit of a washi tape problem, but here we go. Here is, um, here are the washi tapes I'm going to use. I'm just going to use about um, five different ones so that I get some that repeat. We use this one here by my friend Tina Walker. We will include a link to her Etsy shop. Let's see, what other ones do I like the look of? Like this one here, pick up the red. Maybe some, mm, that looks too Christmassy. So just take your time if you are doing washi tape. I have to use this one. It's by my friend Dee Dee Catron. So I'll include a link to that one. Okay, so I have the ones that I'm gonna use now. If um, some of your washi tapes are on the older side, they sometimes um, are a little bit less sticky. 
they lose some of their stickiness. So um, if you want to um, put a layer of glue stick on, like this one is a little bit older. Um, if I found that this wasn't sticking as well, I would maybe put a little bit of glue stick on my cover, but these are all just fine because they're fairly um, new washi tapes. So I'm going to place this on um, my self-healing cutting mat and I'm literally just going to cover the whole thing in strips of washi tape. I like to go in just one direction like this, but you certainly could um, do them in uh, different directions. And I'm putting it on here so that this first one I can get straight by using the grid lines on my cutting mat. And then from then on, maybe I'll put one here using those grid lines and then it's uh, straight. And I go over the edges, which I will cut with um, a knife when I'm done. When there's writing here, I try to use a more opaque tape to cover up the writing, but you don't have to. Once you've covered the whole piece, I generally go over it with a bone folder or my card, my key card, or gift card, and just make sure it's adhered really well. If any of them, like I said earlier, aren't sticking properly, add it in a little glue stick, then flip it over, trim off the excess. So put your metal ruler right up against that edge, take your knife. Now, I'm gonna throw this away, but well, normally I might then put this inside a journal or something, but this time I'm going to throw it away and repeat on the other side. You could also um, flip the pieces of washi tape over to the other side, um, but it, to me it wouldn't look very neat, so I probably I won't do that. I'm just going to go along here one more time along these edges, and then I'm going to repeat with my other cover. The two covers are ready, so I use washi tape, but you may be using something completely different, paint, watercolor paints, gouache, acrylics, who knows? Just decorate your covers however you would like. I've left my backs plain, but you certainly could decorate the back as well. Here are my two signatures that I just had under a heavy book while I made these covers. So these are folded in half already, but now we need to fold our covers in half. So we're just gonna do that by bringing the two ends together and just making sure that this edge lines up. Take your time doing this. Now, if you have used washi tape, and for some reason on this sort of fold is a very thin piece, you may want just to put another piece over the top. You know, say the, the crease happens to be right on the edge of a piece of tape and it starts to lift, you may well put another piece on top. So I folded that with my finger. I'm gonna go in with my bone folder or old gift card and give that a crease. So I want you to, this second cover, I want you to fold it in both directions. You'll see why in a minute so that it folds this way and that way. The other cover doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're going to layer up our covers and our signatures, clip them together and make some sewing holes. At this stage, you're gonna need your two clips. So we're gonna start our sandwich by taking one of our signatures, opening it up to the center and placing it on our work table like that. We're gonna take one of our covers the cover that you didn't bend in both directions. I want you to put it face down, I mean, face up like this over the top of the signature. I want you to take the other cover and place it face up. So make sure you get them, if, they're, if they go in a certain direction, make sure it's the right way up. Place the two covers with the fronts facing one another. Like that, lining up the center fold. And then I want you to pop in that last signature. Make sure all the pages are lined up, pop that over the top. I'm going to turn this around and we're going to make sure that our covers are flush with one another. When we flip this over, this other signature, we're going to, you're going to see a gap on either side and that's good. You just want to center the signature. Do the same here, center the signature. Grab your two clips, clip one side of this crease and clip on the other side of this crease, just like that. So let's go over that one more time. I have a signature here. I have my two covers, fronts facing together and have the second signature. And they're all stacked up along that center crease. And we clip them together with um, clothes pins or binder clips or any kind of clips that you have. Let's flip it over. If you need to adjust this a little bit, you can. 
There we go. If you want to adjust this one at all. What we don't want is this poking out the top. Make sure our covers are lined up nicely. Now I want you to get your ruler and pencil. We're going to work on the inside. So here's the outside crease. We're going to work on the inside crease, this valley fold right here. Take a ruler out. Now we're just measuring the signature. Don't worry about the covers. We're going to measure the white signature, the copier paper. It's five and a half inches tall. And we're going to find the middle. So that's two and three quarters, unless my math is failing me. Not the middle. Then I want you to go to the top of the ruler. I want you to measure it half an inch from the top. And you go to the bottom and measure half an inch from the bottom. Half an inch here and five inches here. Get rid of the ruler. That's enough for our measuring today. We're going to do two more holes for two more pencil marks, roughly in the middle of those other two marks. There's absolutely no need to measure them. Just mark them. I've done mine in pencil, but I'm just going to do them in pen so you can see a little bit more clearly. This is where you'll need either your punching cradle, your piece of foam, your piece of styrofoam, or your phone book. You can place it on here like this with the squishy part underneath. You can open up your sort of big catalog or book to the center and pop it in this little valley right here to punch the holes. I'm going to show you how this little punching cradle works, but you absolutely do not need this just sits in this little cradle like this. Remember, if you have an awl, you can use it, but you can also pop a needle in a cork. And I'm gonna use that today. Basically, we're gonna drive the needle down through all of the layers till it comes out the other side. Now, this is quite a lot of layers, especially with all that washi tape. So just go down, go down straight. Don't go down at an angle. Go down straight through all of those five holes. Make sure you're pushing all the way through and mind your fingers. Let's flip it over and just, whoopsie daisy, make sure they've come through, which is great, they have. Set these to one side now and we get to do the fun part, which is the sewing. I want you to leave these clips in place while we sew. Let's uh, get prepare our thread. So I'm using a wax linen thread, so it has the wax already on it. But if you're using something else like this number five pearl cotton, you're gonna, if you have access to some uh, beeswax, you can add a layer of wax. So this is commonly used in quilting. You can find it in uh, quilt stores. What you do is you just run your thread through one of these holes um, several times to get a nice layer of wax onto the thread. You would do the same if you were using embroidery floss. You may also see beeswax in blocks like this. So if you have access to beeswax, um, use it. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. You can just use the thread like this. In terms of the amount of thread you need, we're gonna measure using the height of the book. So we're just gonna do one, two, three. Snip it off. That's all you need. You don't need a ton. You're not actually going to see the thread on the outside, so I wouldn't get too hung up on the colour. You will see it on the inside. Grab whatever needle you have to hand that fits the thread. Thread your needle. You do not put a knot at the bottom. No knot at the bottom. We're going to start right in the this valley here where we created our holes, leaving those clips in place. We're going to take our needle and thread and put it through this middle hole all the way through all of our layers. And then what we're going to do is leave about two to three inches on the inside. Now we're going to climb up to hole number two. So if you have trouble finding getting your needle all the way through, sometimes it helps to come through from the other side. Push your needle through all of the layers. We started at hole three, we're going up to hole number two. Okay, this is where we started. We're gonna go up to hole number one. Pull nice and tight. Don't pull so tight that you rip your paper. Pull nice and tight. So we started here. We went to this hole, went to this hole, and now we're on this side. We're gonna go back through hole number two. As you're going back through hole number two, try not to go through the middle of your thread. So we're back on the inside, a little valley, back to this first little tail. I want you to skip this hole number three for now. Make a nice long stitch in the center, come down to hole number four. Nice long stitch in the middle. We're at hole number four now, let's go to hole number five. If you have trouble, just come through from the other side. Those layers won't cooperate, which often they don't. 
Come on. Come on, through you come. There we go. What you uh, want to avoid doing is making a brand new hole. That's really annoying. So now we're at hole number five. We go through hole number four, like this. So this is what the inside looks like. Two shorter stitches, one long stitch and a tail. This is what the back looks like. One, two, th three shorter stitches. Let's make a fourth shorter stitch. Come back through the original hole number three. Carefully push the needle through, trying not to make a new hole and try not to split your thread. So on this peak side, one, two, three, four little stitches. And on this inside, we've got two short stitches, one long stitch, and then two loose threads. I'm just going to bring my needle underneath that long thread right there so that I've got one piece on one side of my long stitch, one piece on the other side of my long stitch. I'm going to lose the needle now, put it back into the pincushion. I'm going to tie a knot. So we're going to go back to Girl Scout days and we're going to do a, um, well, I used to call it a reef knot. I think they call it a square knot as well. So you take the left thread over the right thread, create a loop and bring the thread through the loop, pull tight, bring the right loop, um, right thread over the left thread to create a loop, bring the thread under. Tie off a square knot. Let's trim up those extra pieces, push them down flat. This is where the wax helps, um, just kind of holds those in place. Now we can lose those clips and we get to open up our book. So bring these two covers together, bring those two covers together like that and flip over. So you get to choose which is going to be your front cover. So it could be this one, like this, or it could be this one, like this. I think I like this one. So you see you've got like two notebooks sewn together. And you fold them over along this crease here. So the stitching is hidden inside here. You can't actually see it on the outside. So press them down with your fingers, nice and firmly. One cover here, one cover here, your signatures in between. Get your bone folder or your credit card and push, push, push as hard as you can. Just kind of smooth along this edge here and push down. So now you might be thinking, well, that's great, but those covers are way too big. And that's fine. We are going to fold them in at the sides here. And then at the inside, we are going to create some pockets. So let's create our pockets. We have a choice. We can create pockets like this, where you can slide something in from above, or we can create pockets where you slide something in sideways like this. So I'm going to show you um, both options and then you can decide what works best for you. So they're both going to start out. So we're going to start out in the middle of the book. These are two sort of center covers. I'm going to start out by folding this in almost to the edge, but, but not quite, just leaving maybe a quarter inch right here. You can make it wider if you want to. You could make it, I'm just going to make it quarter inch folding. Just going to wrap that. So we're going to do the um, half pocket first. We're going to do this pocket first, like this. So I'm going to remove this section here. You can measure down halfway if you want to, or just eyeball it. Um, let's see. Let's, I'll just do about three inches. So we have a little pocket. Now you can use, um, you could use washi tape to secure this bottom edge um, or double stick tape. I'm gonna use double stick tape just because it's a little bit stronger. This is called um, score tape, um, but there are, there are several other brands around. And one's called like a red liner tape. Also get it on um, like with a dispenser as well. And you put down the tape and then you remove the backing it's kind of plasticky backing and you fold it down like that. So you could secure this edge as well, but I quite like to keep that open and then you can um, put whatever you like inside this pocket from above. You can also cut out a little notch as well if you want to, like a little circle or a square. And then let's do the other type of pocket. So working with the other sort of inside cover, I'm going to fold it 
you're not going to fold it all the way to the edge, you're going to leave about an inch right here between the, um, the spine and the edge of your pocket. Fold it again and rub with your rub that crease with your bone folder or your card. If you happen to have um, a little circle punch, you can cut out a little notch like this, or um, you know, just do it by hand. Or do a little square or a little triangle. It's not necessary. And then take your double stick tape, and we're going to tape along these top two edges. You could also um, use glue along here if you um, didn't want to use double stick tape or you could skip the pockets completely. It's entirely up to you. There we go. So there's our other pocket. Let's rub along that adhesive. And there's a side pocket that you can pop something into, little notes or little tags or something. Okay, so that's how you um, handle the inner pockets. And now we have to um, sort out these extra wide covers. So we have the opportunity to create more pockets if you want to make um, another pocket like this one where you slide in something you could certainly do that but I'm um, just going to create a regular fold over cover let's start with the back cover open up to middle have your signature right here I want you to grab your ruler and slide it between the signature and the cover and I want you to leave a gap of about an eighth of an inch along here and then you can go in with your bone folder or with your um, card and score a line along the edge of the ruler and then push up against that ruler. It's important though that you have this little gap here that you have like an eighth of an inch of um, ruler showing. Take away the ruler and then go back in and press that fold that you just scored. What it does is creates a cover that protects the signature inside. Let's do that on the other side. This can be left open like this as a flap. You can um, completely glue it down. You could just cut along this scored um, line and, and not have this fold over. You can glue it down with double stick tape or you can um, make it into a little pocket. It's entirely up to you. I'm not going to create a pocket with mine. I'm actually going to glue down these flaps. Your flaps might be um, smaller because you used a letter size envelope. I mean letter sized file folder. That's just fine. Just gonna put a couple in there. So I have glued down my two side flaps. I'm not gonna use them as pockets. And my little notebook is finished. So I have this front cover. We have a nice protective flap. My first 20 pages. We have two pockets, two different pockets. Another 20 pages and then my back cover. Enjoy the book and be sure to send me a photograph of your finished book.